Welcome back for a new collections video. This is going to be N64 edition, though I'm going to do quickly a couple of things for the only other handhelds I have. First up, we have two different games for the Bandai Wonderswan. First is the original classic Final Fantasy, which I do think the cartridge design of Wonderswan is interesting and very different from many others. The only other game I have for the Wonder Swan is this. Um, Tekken, like, card fighter. Which is interesting as you use cards and stuff in order to actually do attack damage and stuff. Basically similar to that you would have in, say, Kingdom Hearts, uh, Chain of Memories. Mm. To a certain extent. It's actually really interesting. This is arguably a very different style Tekken game as this remains to this day exclusively to the Bandai Wonderswan. So with that said, next up we are looking at what couple of games I have for the Neo Geo Pocket Color. First up, we have... King of Fighters R2, which I have tried. It's not half bad. It's not, in my opinion, one of the best uh, pocket color games, but still, it is pretty solid for being a handheld fighter. Next, we have another card style battling game called Card Fighters Clash, which it has both SNK and Capcom characters. So it's definitely very unique and different compared to other crossover games. Next up, have Fatal Fury. Now, I'll be honest, I like this game a little bit more than the King of Fighters game. It plays pretty solid also. I do enjoy Terry in the game, and for it being a handheld 2D fighter, it play surprisingly very well. Next, a pretty cool game to have on handheld with Samurai Showdown 2 Portable Edition. But definitely a pretty cool game overall. And honestly, I do recommend to anyone that has the opportunity to try out a Neo Geo Pocket Color, I do highly recommend checking it out as you can still find them yeah they are a bit pricey but they haven't skyrocketed through the roof like the neo geo home consoles like the aes that's going for over a thousand dollars now the cd on average loose is going for like around 300 but while you can still get this for like half that complete in box then we have some of the more interesting games. I will say arguably my personal favorite probably handheld Sonic game of all time is actually on the Neo Geo Pocket Color. Sonic the Hedgehog Pocket Adventure. It plays very well and honestly it plays better in my opinion than pretty much any of the Game Gear games. Which is kind of sad. Second to last we have... Neo Turf Masters, which is arguably one of probably easily in my top five favorite golf games of all time. Seriously, Neo Turf Masters is awesome, and the fact that it's a handheld early era golf game amazes me as how good this game actually plays. And it is also starting to go up in price, so I'm glad I got it when I did for a very reasonable price. Last, arguably the best, I would say, crossover game, at least on a handheld of all time. That being SNK versus Capcom, The Match of the Millennium, which is an awesome game. And like your ultimate final boss of the game is uh, Orochi Iori. But before that, you have to get past the combination of Bison and Geese, which is a nightmare in its own right. So with that said, now on to the N64 stuff. First up, we have 
we have Madden 2000, a definite classic from the fifth console generation. It's not bad. I do have a certain love and fondness for some of the earlier Madden games. Definitely solid overall. And may I add, the N64 cartridge design is probably one of my favorite cartridge designs. Next up we have pretty cool one of the only yellow cartridges uh, that being Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2 as remains to this day my favorite Tony Hawk game though the best version of the game is arguably on the original Xbox 2X but with that said still Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2 is a superb game with a great soundtrack and I duly high, highly recommend this game to any fans of like punk rock and new metal and stuff of the time period when this came out. Nothing beat playing Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2, like dual player against a friend or something, in local co-op, multiplayer and stuff. Like the early Tony Hawk games were just great all around, and this was an era when I actually really liked Activision as well. Next up, we have. Arguably one of my top, probably three favorite racing games of all time. Star Wars Episode One: Pod Racing. I love this to stay, and I was happy when they did a, a full from the ground up remaster of this game. Making it look better and run actually better overall. It's a fun game, and is arguably one of my favorite things to come out of Episode One: The Phantom Mist, though I am actually a defender of Episode One. And general of the prequels. And I always will be. And this was one of the coolest things to come out of episode 1. Though I will say game wise. You got this as well as episode 1. The actual game. Which I do enjoy quite a bit. But this. I put. I hold this in pretty high regard of racing games. Along with probably a few other specific games. Like Hydra Thunder and a few others. Next up, having nostalgia for me from the Attitude Era was WCW NWO Revenge, and having right there on the cover art is awesome. Having Hollywood Hogan, Raven, Goldberg, and Kevin Nash. Definitely four pretty big names for, really from I would say about 98 to 99 on specifically Monday Nitro was great and overall I've always had a, a real fondness for this game it is pretty much still basically neck and neck is my favorite racing or wrestling game of all time it's pretty much between this and No Mercy as my favorite this is easily though the best WCW game that was ever released Also, of course, when it comes to Nostalgia Factor, Pokemon Stadium is a great game that I will always love. Heavy Nostalgia and everything, easily also one of my favorite Pokemon games of all time. Frankly, I'm amazed this game has not skyrocketed in value like many others have. Stadium 2 has gone up a lot more than Stadium 1, but I'm fine. It's basically the battle. I do like, though, the fact you could attach a special pack to the controller and you could play, like, your Pokemon team and stuff from, like, uh, red, blue, or yellow and stuff on here. That is also pretty cool. Next up. Needs no real introduction, you hear the music in the background from it. And that is The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. Even though I do have a heavy nostalgia for the game, it is still arguably not my absolute favorite Zelda game. Don't get me wrong, I like it. But 
I mean, I like a, definitely a few others over Ocarina of Time, though. I still love it. And I will argue, though, it has one of the best soundtracks of the franchise as a whole. Now, from a certain perspective, I would probably put Ocarina of Time around maybe 5th place or something for me personally. I like maybe Majar's Mask just a little bit more. But with that said, still, it does hold a very special place for me. Especially the music. Next up, we have arguably one of my top favorite games to come on the N64. That being, of course, Star Fox 64. A great fun on rail slash platformer game. It was a very interesting hybrid style gameplay. And it took what started on the Super Nintendo and took it way farther. And is arguably considered to this day one of the most iconic games for the N64. Next up, definitely not one of the best ways to play Command & Conquer, but still, as this was one of my very first Command & Conquer games I ever played, along with Red Alert. I have always had a certain real enjoyment of the Command & Conquer series as a whole. It's a great, fun, tactical style game. And really, for me, probably my favorite modern like strategy type game like a man and conquerors probably halo wars next up of course needs no real introduction star wars shadows of the empire which is a great game and i am kind of frustrated at times the fact this game has never received a remaster and it deserves it Shadows of the Empire is great. I love the story. I like a lot of the characters. There are definitely frustrating things in the game, but you kind of expect it of the time period. But I will still argue that it is one of the best Star Wars games ever made. Maybe that's blind nostalgia talking, but whatever. Also, don't want to forget... 007 GoldenEye. Really, it was revolutionary and brought the PC experience to home console, and this really would be the game that would open the floodgates to many other FPS games. Though, I will argue there was a spiritual successor, GoldenEye, I think, took what it did and ran father with it. Plus, I like the post-apocalyptic, futuristic world of it. Still, GoldenEye is great for what it is, definitely. For being such an early shooter, and the fact gameplay is still... Fun to this day. Next up, the other Star Wars game that I really enjoyed being Star Wars Rogue Squadron, the beginning of a series that I've really always enjoyed. And I keep recommending this game in this series to many people as it is still a very reasonable price series to collect. But Rogue Squadron is just a blast to play. Next up needs really no inner introduction. Of course, WWF No Mercy, which is pretty much neck and neck with Revenge as my favorite wrestling game ever. This game is great. Of course, it has many characters in it. You specific characters you will not see in any modern wrestling games uh, specifically a certain Canadian rabbit wolverine and if you know Attitude Era and stuff you know exactly whom I'm talking about without saying the name but with that said this still remains a great game to this day and I'm amazed actually how fun it still is plus the fact you could also create your own wrestler is pretty awesome as well. Next we have Needs No Real Introduction Killer Instinct Gold and there you have on the cover Gargos. KI Gold I feel does not get as much love as it should as for me is probably my favorite fighting game on the N64 as a whole. 
To be fair, there isn't too much major competition of fighting games on the N64 to compete against, really, for gold to be the top game. There are a few that definitely are definitely heavy nostalgia. Even if the games aren't great, like next up we have War Gods, which was really a early era 3D fighter from Midway. Basically, this was testing out the mechanics and stuff that would end up being continued into the first full 3D Mortal Kombat game of all time. So, I like War Gods for what it did. It was very different compared to many other fine games of the time. Even if it's not a great game. And speaking of the game, of course, that would be testing the 3D engine, which would later be used in Mortal Kombat 4. I think, the personally, 4 gets a way too much hate. And I don't... In my opinion, I don't think it deserves the hate it gets. I personally... I've always enjoyed MK4, though specifically the PS1 version is the better way to play. Even though this version doesn't have long load times, graphically, especially with cinematics and stuff, there's really no actual cinematic cutscenes, sadly, because of the memory limitations on the N64 cartridge versus actual disc. Only three left to look at. So, with that said, next up is arguably one of the only JRPGs actually ever released on the N64, which is kind of weird. But, I have a weird sort of, like, love for Quest 64. I feel it does not get near the love it deserves. Yes, it is a somewhat basic JRPG compared to many RPGs and stuff on, like, the Saturn and the PS1, but still, I love this game for what it is, and yes, maybe it is blind nostalgia talking, but I'm fine with that. Second to last, the spiritual successor to, of course, GoldenEye, with a more futuristic, post-apocalyptic feel and tone, and I actually think it took what GoldenEye did and took it way farther. Of course, one of the greatest games ever done by Rare. Uh, which, of course, if you may not know, Rare is arguably one of the few big names in gaming actually from the UK. Which is why I know a few specific... Uh, other game reviewers on YouTube that very passionately love Rare as a company, that being like a specifically a Top Hat Gaming Man, as well as a Guru Larry. But with that said, last but not least, the beginning of a specific franchise that is still beloved to this day. Of course, that being Super Smash Bros. Which is still very beloved to this day by many fans. And who would have imagined, though funny enough, it would steal a lot of its actual gameplay mechanics and stuff from a game that never actually got officially released one year prior to its release. And that was Thrill Kill. And if you want to know more about the actual game Thrill Kill, I highly recommend checking out Maximilian Dude's uh, video fighting history on it, or check out Matt McMuscle's uh, What Happened video on it. There's definitely a few, I think, very thorough looks into the game as a whole. But with that said, I'll see y'all next time. Stay safe out there. Again, same time, same YouTube channel.